We are live. This is the channel that doesn't put you in time out for having an opinion. So get plenty of them in the comment section now. We are live, everybody. We're talking what's going on with Dan Ashworth. So Jim Radcliffe's had to step in and sort this mess out. Big guns are out. Amanda Staley's involved. Co-owner and minority shareholder at Newcastle. Obviously, we all know who she is. Hard person to deal with herself. So two big guns locking horns and trying to sort out everything that's going on with the Dan Ashworth situation. An update on Wilcox. Where's Aaron Mambazak? Are going and Liverpool, what's going on? I, I'm not going to get into them because anything can happen in a second leg. And let's be honest, we're no one to talk, are we, when it comes to actual performing this season and what we've actually done and like what we're actually still in competition wise. Uh, hello, everyone. Please say hello to my companion, my co worker, <laughs> my partner. Co worker now. <laughs> <laughs> Kazzy's on comments, people. Say hello, everyone. And Kaz Hi, everyone. You'll be glad to know Adam's got his pants on today. Uh, of course, that Jesus Christ, like, seriously. <laughs> right, okay, first things first, pigeon count. Zero, like, honestly, they must be a bit stingy with the spare chips today, but, right, let's get into what's going on, everyone. Make sure your comments are in, make sure you're telling me exactly what you're feeling about the situation. If you've got any questions for me, or Kaz, get them in, and we'll get through as many as we possibly can and give as many shout-outs to everyone that we possibly can as well. Uh, obviously, please do give the video a like, guys. Like, I know it's like a few of you in there already so like the video and do subscribe if you are tuning in for the first time i think on this stream alone we should be able to hit that 42,000 subscriber mark we're only a few away and when i say a few less than half a dozen i think it is right now so if you are just tuning in yeah you don't get banned you don't get put in time out tell me i'm wrong slag me off do what you want don't completely abuse me you still won't be turned off because every United fan deserves an opinion and that's what you're going to get on for every United TV, everyone. Uh, <clears throat> uh, apologies, first of all, for the Barry White voice. Hello. Uh, we, were <laughs> we were out last night and I don't know what it is, whether it was just talking too much, whether it was loud. I had a few sherbets. I had a lot of pizza. You ate all the pizza? No, I had a, I had a lot, but I didn't eat all of it. Uh, and the dessert as well. Like, like honestly feeling it like today, like didn't gym this morning. Oh, I'm going away, right? Yeah, let's get back into what's going on at United. Sorry, everyone. Okay, uh, quickly, first of all, headlines, and then I'll get into your comments straight away. Uh, headlines being so Jim Radcliffe has stepped in to try and rectify the situation which is going on with Dan Ashworth and Manchester United. Obviously, months ago, it was announced that he's on gardening leave at Newcastle and United and Newcastle were in talks over a compensation fee to speed up the process and cut that gardening leave short i.e. try and get Dan Ashworth in before the, jan before the transfer window opens this summer. It's still not looking like it's happening but now Sir Jim Radcliffe seems to have taken his ball in a little bit and has taken it upon himself to go and meet with co-owner and minority shareholder Amanda Stavely at Newcastle to try and rectify everything and get this speeded up. What we will end up paying I do not know. I still think we're going to take a hit if we want Dan Ashworth in. I think at the end of the day, New, uh, Ineos are looking like they are trying to play hardball. But if they have to take a little bit of a hit on this, I don't think anyone's going to be too bothered. Like, you've done your job, you've done your bit, you've not buckled at the first. And you are trying to get one of the best in the business, and that's not going to be easy. I think we'll realise that as we go along. When we're talking to Aaron Mbazaka, an update on Wilcox as well. Uh, and obviously the injury update going into this weekend's game. The Ten Hag press conference is also coming up very soon, so... Uh, we'll talk about that maybe a bit later on tonight. Hopefully we'll have Jay along as a preview show uh, for Bournemouth as well, as well later on. But Kaz, comments, what people saying so far? Yeah, hi to everyone <laughs> who's in the comments. A um, load of you um, putting comments in already. Mel says, love you guys. Um, love feeling you too, Mel. mutual. <laughs> Mark says, someone call HR. Uh, London said the pigeons are on loan as four just walked past us. Oh, yeah. um, Stephanie says Adam battling security, pigeons and double sausage sellers. <laughs> <laughs> Graham says uh, no Spongebob briefs for Adam today. No what? No Spongebob briefs for Adam Duds. today. <laughs> <It does>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mark Langridge has been a member for three months and he wow. says just pay what they want, it's getting stupid now. Mark's a man, that's it. Thanks for renewing Mark as well, buddy. Really appreciate and that. And somebody called Polio, I think it is, says, just stood behind you. Hi. So. Really? If you are, Polio. <laughs> come and say hello, Polio, we'll if you are. Uh, I'll give me a wave. Just come and say, don't be shy. Uh, this is why we're live outside Old Trafford. Like, some people uh, don't like it being, or interrupted and stuff like that. Well, live and stuff, but 
we want to talk to as many people as possible and we are going to be talking to a few doing some other content after the live is finished but if you want to come over and say hello if you are about around Old Trafford then I'm here here I am here I am right okay let's get on with the news anyway so in terms of my look on to Jim Radcliffe going in what's going on right now the fact that uh, oh there we go <laughs> Uh, people saying hi. Was that polio? I think that was, yeah. Yes. <laughs> we, we give them a nice big wave. <laughs> yeah, so my opinion on Sir Jim Radcliffe stepping in, like, uh, is it concerning that the head honcho, the top man, is having to come in and sort this out? Like, if he's leaving certain members of Manchester United staff that he has employed or has already got working for him, for Ineos, and is now part of this sporting structure at United, if they cannot get this done, is that concerning for the future that Sir Jim has stepped into this situation or is this just a case, and I want your comments on this, like, is it concerning, like I said, first of all, that he's having to come in and the other members of staff have not been able to get it done or is this just a case of, like, Sir Jim just to get things going and dealing with this awkward situation, which is Dan Ashworth coming in, getting everything sorted on that side of things. Once all this is in place, this sort of scenario isn't going to come about again and the normal people dealing with normal day-to-day -day football stuff like transfers, contracts and stuff, they'll be all right with that. Like, If Sir Jim Radcliffe isn't willing to pay the money and he's given his team a certain amount that they can go to and they cannot negotiate that in, then the decision ultimately comes down to what Sir Jim Radcliffe wants and if he's not happy with it, then maybe he does have to step in and try and sort it out. He is known as the hard negotiator and we'll see what he's made of. Like, I think everything is amicable at the moment just when it comes to the negotiations and I think Sir Jim Radcliffe will go in there, open arms, let's try and sort something out, let's not make this worse than what it needs to be, let's not drag this out longer than it needs to be. His whole look on things, Sir Jim Radcliffe's, is that Dan Ashworth is top class He's a brilliant operator. Why should we, or why should anyone be stopping Dan Ashworth doing his job in football? Like Everyone wants to see it. At the end of the day, football is different. And when you're dealing with a rival and hampering a rival the way we are in taking Dan Ashworth, then you've got to take what's coming to you in terms of the backlash. And the backlash is they're digging the heels in and just saying, no, we're not going to lower our price. You pay this price. Otherwise, he stays on guard and leave till... God knows when, because I don't know when that is. There's been a few different rumours of different timescales of how long Dan is going to be out twiddling his thumbs or just sitting there with his pina colada in the garden after he's mowed the lawn. And I tell you what, B&Q are probably earning a mint off Dan Ashworth right now, aren't they, in all their gardening department. So, yeah, that's how I see it, guys. Let me know what you think. Let me know how you see this. Are you worried that he's had to come and step in? Are you worried that he's actually uh, not been able to employ staff to get this job done? I don't know. Let me know. Let me know in the comments section. Is there anyone in there? Kaz? Uh, yeah, we've got quite a few comments coming in. Uh, Mayo Red said, it's good that an owner has gone to an owner one-to-one -to, -one to bypass those who are slowing down the process. It could be on okay, their so side. Okay, so positive then. Yeah, I like that. I yep. see that point. Um, Contemplation Station says, United are still operating like a championship team. Unless we get a clear out, we will suffer next season. Mm-hmm. Gareth says, Sir Jim must have some dirt on members of the Newcastle board. <laughs> uh, Mark Langridge, it's not rocket science, pay the 20 million, and if we save 5 million on four transfers because of it, it's job done. Plus, I think the yearly wage of the players leaving cover it anyway. Yeah, they probably would. We've got like... Josh in the chat as well. Uh, Sir Jim stepping in just shows strong leadership for me, what we've missed for years. Yeah, we'd like seeing like an owner, a co-owner in Sir Jim Radcliffe right now. I've actually seen him getting his hands dirty. Like, I've seen him here at Old Trafford in the rain for the Munich Memorial. Like, he understands what it means to the fans and what the club means to the fans and stuff like that. He's getting involved in negotiations. He's already done an interview and spoke openly about what he wants. Uh, I still don't agree with a three-year plan, as everybody knows, but still, he's getting on with it. Like, if he's going to back himself, I'm all for it. Like, get in there and get the job done. No one is going to run your business as well as you. He can employ the best in class everywhere. But Sir Jim has got to where he is now through doing what he does. He knows what other departments he needs staff for and the best in class for to help him get to where he's got to now. And this, the negotiating factor, everyone knows. If you don't know, Sir Jim is a master at the negotiating side of things. He is known as the hard talk. And he, he went head to head with unions. He went head to head with union leaders 
he was known as the hard man, like the hard talker, the hard, the non-negotiables. That's what he was built upon, his reputation-wise, anyway. So him going in, dealing with Amanda Stavely, like I said, two big guns, locking horns, and we'll see who comes out on top. At the end of the day, we know that Dan Ashworth is going to be a Manchester United. He's going to be part of Manchester United's team. All we're talking about, and all we're really discussing is the time scales and like who has got the <clears throat> I wouldn't say the bigger the bigger balls in all of this or who can hold on longer but well I think that's all it is really it's just I think it's egos getting in the way right now of the likes of Sir Jim and Amanda Staley Newcastle owners like they just don't want to help Manchester United out in any way and I can't blame him for that I don't think anyone can but hey uh, any more comments in there, Kaz? Yeah, Ozzy Osborne's in the chat. Oh, Ozzy. Uh, <laughs> always come and have a chat with you, Adam, proper top lad. Uh, does it? Yeah, I don't Where? know if it's the real Ozzy Osborne. No, I don't think that must, I don't think I've ever met Ozzy Osborne, so that must be just a YouTube name, <laughs> I'm guessing. But Jordan yes. Pell says, don't care who steps in, just get it done simple. Yep. Uh, we've got Roddy in the chat, Stu, Steph, Compost Smurf. Regulars. Lots of our regulars. Graham's there as well. Graham, nice. What's happening, Graham? Hope you're doing well. Hope you're looking forward to the weekend. I also got chub for Crystal Palace, just so you know. Yeah, jokes. Graham's giving some advice out as well. I think there's been some download issue on some of the Coventry tickets, so uh, thanks for that, Graham. Um, just to say as well, we've got 439 people watching as it stands and 91 likes, so please like the video, everyone. Ooh, one away from that 100 mark, everyone. Don't forget, uh, tomorrow it's TIFO time. Watch along, guys. I just want to quickly update you, since we've got plenty in the chat right now. Obviously, tomorrow we're going to be doing the warm-up show. That's going to be around about midday-ish. Uh, and then we'll go into the watch along on TIFO for the members. Afterwards, it's going to be me and Jay with the breakdown show as well. So, nice chilled out Saturday. Not too much early doors, just leading up to the game, as match days usually are. I think it's all about the game. There's not much news going around unless anything breaks that's really worthwhile talking about in the morning. Then we will be seeing you right normal time ish, around about 12, 1 o'clock ish, something like that. But keep your notifications on. We will be there in the full warm up show for the Bournemouth game. I'm pretty nervous. I mean, the press conference is coming up any time. Uh, I think everyone is already gathering at Carrington Journalist Wise. We're keeping an eye on social media for any updates and stuff. But I think the general thing coming out of the press conference will be questions regarding Ten Hag, questions regarding uh, un injuries and updates and stuff like that. I couldn't want to move on to the next bit in talking about Julian Nagelsmann like I've kept quiet because everybody knows if you haven't watched this channel like he is my man if Ten Hag was to get the boot he would be my only candidate because I don't see Ancelotti being available and he's the only other one like if Ancelotti's there it's like go get him like seriously quickly but Julian Nagelsmann is definitely the man that I would take now there are reports going around that he has been approached by Manchester United, but not him, his agent. And he's told his agent, well, the Euros are on, just to quill any sort of debate or argument or anyone suggesting that he is going to be moving away from the German international job. He's actually open to taking uh, another contract at Germany as well. Uh, he is the best in class, I think, when it comes to managers. I think he really is. Like You're seeing right now like the absolute nightmare that's going on at Bayern Munich. And he was sacked last term by Bayern Munich and I think that was a bit premature and I think Bayern are learning that now like the season is over for them like they're clinging on to beating Arsenal in the Champions League and where they're still in the tie I don't think they're good enough to beat Real Madrid or Manchester City anyway which is the semi-final so that just shows you like Julian Nagelsmann was winning trophies won the Bundesliga won the cup twice for Bayern Munich and then was let go didn't even get a chance to finish the season and claim that fourth trophy so that there, I mean, the people are looking at why was he sacked by Bayern Munich? I would say Bayern Munich's hierarchy and the issues at that football club and the people that are there in, in at board level really do dictate what goes on. And I think they will be in complete and utter meltdown right now looking at how their season's going. They've got a manager that's just there that knows he's gone. They're being kicked all over the place in the Bundesliga every single week. And it just goes to show that, you know what, maybe it wasn't Julian who was a problem at Bayern. Maybe he just said no. Maybe he was like the managers that have been passed here at Manchester United, like, like Louis van Gaal, like Jose Mourinho, who opened their mouths and then were kicked out by the football club because they wanted to have their say. We were actually honest 
that's what the difference is when it comes to managers. When it comes to them opening their mouths with hierarchies like at Manchester United, like at Bayern Munich, then they don't like it. They don't like being put in their place and it usually ends up in the manager being sacked. So Julian Nagelsmann, I think, he is perfect for Manchester United. He really is. Under a new regime structure like anything else, I think he's ideal. But the, the noise at the moment is he's happy at Germany and he wants to see out the yours. Again, it's another complicated situation. It would be the same with Gareth Southgate, but obviously we don't want to be anywhere near Southgate. In terms of qualities, Nagelsmann leaves him for dead. But with the Euros coming, the international uh, tournament coming up, managers are not going to be wanting to talk about it too much in terms of what happens after the tournament. We'll see. I think the rumours will be... I think the rumours will be building and building and building as soon as the Euros finishes. Like, I don't know if Tanag is going to be let go straight away after the season finishes. I don't know if that's going to happen. There are still... Like, it's so hit and miss within the media right now and it's good because no one actually knows what's happening and this is a good sign for United going forward that with Ten Hag, we, like, he could win the FA Cup and still get sacked. It's looking very likely right now that he's going to be out of the Champions League and come away potless with no trophies this season. That, from what a lot of the media is saying, is say la vie, see you later, done and dusted. I've just been talking to someone who I know from BN Sports over in, uh, in Costa, just over the road there, before we came on. Uh, and he was saying... It really doesn't look like Ten Hag is going to be in charge of Manchester United next season. And that's what's going around. Like, there is this common knowledge as such, 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 well, as such, as such, as such <laughs> that Ten Hag, no matter what happens, is not going to be the man going forward. I think Murto going now as well. Because the rumours earlier on were Murto and Ten Hag are planning the, sh the transfer window. Now Hargreaves has stepped in. You know where I'm going with that. It's like, yeah, they can say what they want, but eventually it just moves on and moves on and you get to a point where it's like, well, no, it's quite clear what the message is. Everyone else has gone apart from Ten Hag. I think Ineos want a complete clean break. I think the manager will be replaced. That is my honest opinion. If Ten Hag stays, it's good. If I find out that we had a chance of getting Nagelsmann and he wanted to come and we keep Ten Hag, I will start to question Ineos. I will, and where they're looking. Like they have this plan, and it may work with Ten Hag. I don't know. Like, I don't know. But from what I've seen, I think there's a lot of problems with Ten Hag. Uh, this squad, the mess that we're having to deal with. It's not all his fault, like we've said before. But honestly, you know how football works, and I think it will be him that gets the boot, and no one else. Uh, we'll see what happens with the players as well when that comes. But again, fast forward this bleeding season, so we can actually find out. Kaz? Um, yeah, Henry was in the chat earlier just saying, Adam and Kaz, would you appoint Nagelsmann as manager your opinions, please? And I think you just um, answered his question. So that <laughs> Hopefully was I mean, that good. does it. Of course I would. Um, I love him. Mel said, Adam with you on that, the man uh, the man for this job, best in class. Um, Gehen Oates says, I totally agree with you about Julian. He's the man and he's young. Bayern made a huge mistake, mistake sacking him. I think um, Eric Ten Hag is done. He's sacked himself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think... Uh, you never want to see people lose their jobs. You don't, uh, but it's inevitable, isn't it? Like, it's football and the way it works. And Ineos said it many a times before, they'll want to make a statement come the summer, they'll want everyone to know that they're in charge. And if you have got a new manager in place, with everyone else new coming in in place, it just makes everything easier. Everyone else has gone. Like, anyone who is important has now been booted out by Ineos it's time to start it's time to turn the page it's time to start a new era and honestly I've, i just i cannot see how he survives like yeah if he miraculously wins all the last seven games and we somehow scrape into the top five slash four get champions league is a chance but that's not going to happen is it it's not also the phone's back in the chat he says my Ozzie. lad is ollie mate and we always come over and see you keep smashing it mate Holly, Holly, Holly. Is that father and son? I father and son, so yeah. Ollie. Used to sit near me the old season tickets, I'm sure that's it. Yeah, just let us know. Um, and he also says, um, if you could have four signings this season, who would they be and why? Four signings this season? Uh, I would... He's putting you on the spot Personally, now. Personally, if I got a quick fire, four signings. If it wasn't Ten Hag, uh, I would take... I would take Tony, I would take Frimpong, I would take Bramthwaite, and I would take 
Neves. Jao Neves, that's four, isn't it? Is that four? I'll that push Dallow over to the left. I'd have Frimpong on the right. I'd have Bramford in the middle alongside Martinez and uh, Jao Neves uh, in centre midfield. I think that's youthful. I think that is vibrant. And I think that is a completely different look at Manchester United altogether with a new spine. So, yeah. Uh, yep. Any more there, Kaz? Uh, the sun's just come out, so um, yeah, might be casting you a, the, uh, a little bit of black. shadow. Oof. Get a bit of sun on the back, eh? Getting us ready for the summer. <laughs> We've got Jim in the chat. He says, wish we didn't have two teams. We are always wondering which team is going to turn up. They can't be bothered team or the playing out of their socks team. It does my head in. Playing out of their socks, but with no real plan team. You could have a few. Like, I don't. I think there's more than two teams. I think there's two or three teams. And I think that's, uh, I think that's the problem we've got here at United. I do think that... Not knowing, and like what I said about Roy Keane in his comments when he said, Look, you're always worried as a United fan because you just don't know what Man United team is going to turn up. So that's that's the big fear in everything. That is the big fear. Uh, um, we've got comments, Kaz, Kaz? Kaz in the chat. Um, he says Nagelsmann is a good option to be fair, represents what United needs right now a fresh, ambi ambitious legacy builder. Definitely. Uh, in terms of what is coming and who uh, is. We talked about in this press conference this afternoon with Ten Hag, we talked about him and his own position. We've gone over that. Some questions may come in the way of what's happening with the ownership, any update on uh, communication with Ineos regarding the uh, technical director, Wilcox. I think now an update on that is that communications with Southampton have gone very, very well. Uh, this was from the Muppeteers the other day, came out that uh, communications and conversations on the compensation factor for Jason Wilcox are as nowhere near as much of an issue as they are with Dan Ashworth and we can expect him to be in place before the end of the season. I think United need that because obviously with many members of the old regime now going, we do need people in place and with Dan Ashworth not looking like he's going to be here at United for the transfer window, you've got to look at needing someone like Wilcox and his experience alongside Omar Barada also uh, being in there as well. I think it gives us a little bit more a little bit more confidence as United fan base going into the summer that we've got people don't know what they're doing there. So, yeah. Uh, Kaz? Yes, Stu's in the chat. We can get all, all right, the Stu. new managers we want, but with these players still here, nothing changes at all. Um, mm -hmm. United spotlight there saying, I'd get Nagelsmann and sell Rashford, full on, fresh start, all the big wigs and a big player gone shows they mean business. Oh, 100%. That's everything. That is like the biggest statement you can make. Selling Rashford, new manager, and no one can complain. And there'll be a few people that do complain because they want Tenag to stay and don't want Man United to be that sacking manager's football club. Well, we are. Simple. That's what we are. And until we get it right, I think that's going to carry on that way. That's the way business works. Uh, Graham's in the chat. It says, Branfway is a left-footed centre-back. Would he play with Martinez if everyone is fit? I think so. I think so. Uh, I want him. I mean, you can look at Tadebo as well. Uh, I just like... I like Bramfway, I like how he is. I mean, I, everyone knows, like, it'd be interesting to see if another manager comes in. Like, Ten Hag has been massively keen on having the left-footed centre-back. That was one of his first players that he earmarked when he came in, when he was talking with John Myrtle. Uh, that was reported on The Athletic the other day, that he wanted a left-sided centre-back. So he's keen on this. It'd be interesting if another manager does come in, if he's bothered about the left-sided centre-back myth. That's all it is. It's absolute garbage for me. Like... I played at that position, yeah, nowhere near the highest level, but let's be honest, like, if you're a centre-back and you can't play on the left, you can't play on the right, and you can't use both feet, you don't belong at Man United. I'm sorry. Like, you should be able to play both sides. I think I actually was comfortable playing on the left-hand side, being a right footer. Like, I, I can, I've, I'm not for that. I mean, I'm not the manager, and I'm not going to make that decision. That's just my own personal opinion on it. I think it's a load of shit. Like, stop going on about what foot a centre-back is. You're a centre-back. Deal with it. Kaz? Yeah, we've got a new member. It's Henry's a new member and that was gifted Henry. from Anthony Wisdom. So Anthony thank Wisdom. You. Thank you, Anthony. Henry, top man. Welcome to the Members Club, my friend. And we've got uh, Kaz EM. So we've got another Kaz in the chat. Um, welcome to Mad Red Free. Ooh, another an member. Another Kaz? Yeah, K-A-Z. Oh, right. So <laughs> Guys. Uh, yeah, so little... their new members can join the watch along. Tomorrow. Yes, they can watch do, join on just an update uh, on TFO for the watch along tomorrow, guys. So all members, this is uh, a new profile page. We have a direct link to that just to make it easier to log in. 
uh, is being created and we should have that ready for tomorrow and I'll update you in a community post on that. So what it is is a, uh, a page, my own personal profile page on TFO with all of the stuff that's going on and direct links to the watch alongs. All you need to do is use the link directly to my profile rather than trying to find the watch along and then all my stuff will be on there and that's how it's going to be changed up. So uh, all updates for T4 watchers and members will be coming over today and tomorrow. So just stay tuned for that, guys. Kaz? Yeah, Alien's in the chat. He says, right, someone Pete. phone Liverpool and ambulance. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Where did your quad go? Where did your treble go? Where did anything go? Where's that open top bus parade for finishing third and winning the Carabao Cup? I'm sure that's exactly what United <laughs> did last season, isn't it, Liverpool? But hey, hey, they can still win the league. I'm not going to say anything yet. You never know with Liverpool what happens on European night. Something might happen in Italy, yeah, I don't know. Uh, but can you just imagine Liverpool and this Klopp, the quadruple talk, and then they end up winning exactly what United did last season? Oh, that would be epic, wouldn't it? There's Kaz? so many Liverpool memes going around today, it's been hilarious. It's ridiculous, isn't it? No, it's um, not ridiculous, it's funny. Stu's got a serious question, he's asking there, would you bring Chris Smalling back? No, no, I would not bring Chris Smalling back. Never go back. Never go back. That's every walk of life. So no, no Chris or Michael Smalling. Mike Smalling, remember that, Louis? Yeah, Mike Smalling. <laughs> um, get hands in the chat says, I agree, Adam, you're a professional footballer. You should be able to play both sides at centre-back no matter what foot is best. Yeah, yeah. If you ask any professional footballer, like, just play. Just play. Stop making the game complicated, for God's sake. We've got enough with inverted wingers right now. It's like you've got a centre-back available. I can't play him because he's not a left-footer. Shut up, talking absolute garbage. <laughs> talking about centre-backs, uh, we've got any more comments before we move on to the next bit, Kaz? Just quickly, I'd say Steph's keeping us all updated with the likes, so thank you, Steph. What um, are we on, Chris, Steph? Um, I, well, what are we on now? Because that was a little while ago. We're close um, to 200. We're very close to 200. We're six off 200. Oh, come on, guys. Let's get in there, please, with the likes. Let's and, get it up um, to two. Chrissy in the chat as well says, I think Sir Jim and Amanda Stavely are just meeting co-owner to co-owner to iron out details and come to an agreement. That's fine. Hope no so. problem with that. We're good there. Um, Gehan's asking, have you seen Craig? <laughs> have I seen Craig? Oh, God. I can still hear the, uh, the, the rat. There's, there's a meme going around of Craig oh. <laughs> where he just lets out this yelp, like a big, like, <laughs> I don't even know what the noise is. I might just check in with him later just to see how he is, poor lad. Uh, but when a season starts to unravel the way it is for Liverpool, it's the most stressful thing in the world. Like, we've been here, haven't we, loads of times. Title charges, challenging for... It is virtually impossible. And as much as I hate to say it, like, I mean, what City did last season was just ridiculous. I hate it. And if they do it again this season, like, it's going to be a nightmare trying to catch that and try and, uh, and replicate that. It's going to be horrible. Uh, into what else is going to be said in this press conference. Uh, like I said, we'll go over all of the details to make sure later, but I'm guessing from reports that have come out that Johnny Evans is not going to be fit. So we're going to see Willie Cambuela and Harry Maguire in the team against Bournemouth. That because we now may have seen Rafael Varane play his last game for Manchester United, according to reports, guys. That's the news that's sort of circulating now. So if Rafael Varane is, in fact, out for a few weeks, which is being reported with another muscle injury the sixth time he's been unavailable for Manchester United due to injury this season this one could be the last one the final nail in the coffin for Rafael Varane and his time at Manchester United and that is the end of his United career because according to reports he is out for a few weeks and that will see him through to the end of the season this hope he was going to be available for the semi-final that's now been quashed I think it's James Ducker in the Telegraph who was talking about Rafael Varane now being available. <laughs> oh, cheers, mate. <laughs> uh, he's now going to be unavailable for that game. Not made it. And it's worse than what we first thought. I mean, how many times are we going to hear that this season? So, Rafael Varane, if this is the case, well, he's been at Manchester United, has only been available for 50% of the games. It's time, isn't it? As much as I love him, I think he's done and dusted. We have a super chat from General Foodie, is it? It is. And what a way to announce it. Thanks, General Foodie. 42k. 42k with a super chat. Whoop, whoop. Get in there, FUTV Army. Thank you so much. <laughs> On to the next one. Yes, we are still chasing 50k. It's not a million miles away. I'm a poet and I didn't know it. <laughs> but yeah, uh, that. Uh, thank you so much, guys. Uh, brilliant way to actually probably finish the show as well. 
uh, there with uh, announcing that we have just surpassed 42,000 subscribers. Absolutely fantastic. Again, big massive thank you to all the mods and the members that push the channel, get people involved, sharing the video and everything like that. It all counts and all goes towards helping us build and get the channel even higher and better than what it is right now. And we have got a lot of plans going forward, guys. Uh, we're almost ready for the next chapter, which someone behind the camera is getting very nervous about as well. But we'll keep you posted <laughs> on that and what's happening. So, yeah, it's coming. It's coming. But again, massive thank you, guys. Uh, and yeah, I think uh, we will finish up the show there, guys. That is your morning update. We'll be back later on with all the information from the press conference. Uh, let's just check out the comments quickly for yeah. anything before I just, we finish. I just wanted to say thank you to everyone for 229 likes that we're finishing on. 229? So wow, you had a bit of a boost there at the end, didn't you? A bit and of an Anthony Wisdom just said, uh, just said, keep going, Adam and Kaz. You are building a great community full of fantastic people. Do you know what? Just on that, there's the community side of thing, and this is why we were approached by TFO. Uh, TFO have now added more uh, YouTubers and more channels to their platform. And that league table has got bigger. There was a few when we won it last month. The league table now is a lot bigger. And we've done one watch along, guys. And the retention and the amount of people and the members that came across from YouTube. We've only done one. Others have done a couple already on there. I guess who's still top of the league? <laughs> FUTV. That's it. We are still the best That's that there is. To you lot. It's about the community, guys. Like, you know what? The subscribers is fantastic, but what I love about this channel is that people come here because they can have a voice, they can be heard, they can have their comments read out, they can be involved. That's why we brought in T4, so we can get you guys in on video as well talking, and that is something that I've wanted to build. Like, I've been, everyone knows my work in YouTube and everything that I've been doing, and like, I've been starved of what I've wanted to be able to do and create. And as a content creator, that's exactly what we want. We want to create content that people want to watch. But more importantly, what, what what people want to be involved in. And you are a big part of what everything is there on FUTV. And all of the success, it's not just me, it's not just Kaz, it's all you guys as well. And on that, we're going to finish up today. That is your morning show, completely done and dusted. Thank you for tuning in. Super chats, new members, all of your comments, all of the likes. Thank you, Kaz. Happy Friday, everyone. Have a good one, people. See you at 6.30.